Okay. okay, good evening. Welcome to the Town of Brookfield Select Board meeting for March 16th, 2023. Please rise to say the pledge. <coughs> pledge allegiance yes. to, to the flag of the United, United States, States of America and, and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. All right. Um, so we've got announcements. Reminder from the Highway Department, winter parking ban is effective through April 1st. There'll be, there shall be no parking on any streets between the hours of 11 p.m. and 6 a.m. Vehicles in violation will be ticketed and towed at owner's expense. I, snow or ice removed from driveways, sidewalks, or private property shall not be plowed, shoveled, or blown across any public way, street, or roadway. Um, can I get a report on the approved warrants? Uh, make a motion to approve the warrants as follows, FY 2318, accounts payable $1,582,041.38, FY 2318, payroll $187,240.86, FY 2318, withholding $29,919.75, and then voiding a check for FY 2318 of 10000 Okay. Do we have a second? Second for discussion. Okay. I, I'm just curious that the AP uh, warrant seems very high at a million dollars. Am I misremembering? No, I, I didn't see anything huge that went through that was abnormal, but there was probably a large insurance payment involved. Okay. And actually, we are paying off the, what, the things that went through was the uh, the fire truck because of the borrowing. Mm -hmm. So we're paying off all of those, the fire oh, truck, the Heller House, the, okay. the police station. So those are all included in, so, in the payoff from so the borrowing. Okay, so this is, th these are, these are um, transactions involved with the debt we're incurring? Yes. No, well, these, these are the transferring of the debt. Good so sure. we've got to pay off how we're currently funding mm -hmm. them so that yeah. right and these are all expenses so the offsetting income from the borrowing is not shown right right okay and what's void i'm sorry oh the void so when we did the borrowing for the fire truck the bank made an error on the borrowing we had retained ten thousand dollars to pay down the debt mm -hmm they didn't borrow the full amount. They borrowed 10,000 less. So instead of paying that debt down, we're voiding the check to pay the debt down and now doing a ban to make up the $10,000 difference at no charge. The bank made the mistake, so they're doing all of this at no charge. Mm -hmm. So we're just taking that 10,000 and we're switching it over to paying off the ban. Okay. So, okay. and I have the ban in the packet, but mm -hmm. All right. Thank you. You're welcome. I'm all set. All right. All in favor? Aye. 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 Okay. First item on the agenda is Congregational Church request to use the town hall in case of rain for their vacation Bible school. So historically, we've pretty much blanket approved any requests to use the town hall for any non-corporate purposes, basically. So can I get a motion relative to that? Uh, make a motion to approve the request to use the town hall by the Congregational Church in the event of rain for Vacation Bible School. Second. Any discussion? Any concerns? I know that we No, don't I don't. I know there's precedent for this. They've done this before. Yep. And so, as such, there's no reason to deny it now. So. All right. All in favor? Aye. 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 All right, contracts, entertainment for the 350th um, celebration. Okay, so some of these contracts cannot be done as written. The DJ okay. contract is fine okay. because there's no deposit. Okay. But the ones that have, um, we can do a deposit for a rental space, also fine. Okay, that's, that's so that not an okay. issue. But the two, there should be two for McGee and Marching Band. Yeah. Those both have that, that the bill has to be paid prior to them actually coming out and doing it, and that absolutely can't happen. 
because we can't prepay. We can't pay for something we didn't receive. We can use it to reserve a space, but we cannot pay a total bill prior to them actually performing. So the way they've handled other concerts in town is they cut the check and the, the committee that's paying holds the check and pays them after the performance. Okay. Which is what Lori said that, that she would agree to doing. So we just need to take that piece Her of it out of here. here. So if you would approve this other than with, with, so with the with amended the, with language, the, with the then, amended I can language. Say, then I can sign it for you um, once it's complete, finished or corrected. Should we just put payment will be available? Follow immediately following the event and do the no nope. check. I, I just because I, they are going to be the ones amending the contract and I haven't seen what they're going to put in for the Got clause. It. Okay. So as long as it doesn't require prepayment. Right. Okay. So so we need a motion to approve these contracts with the one stipulation that section three of the McGann marching band contract be amended to reflect payment after receipt of services. Is that what you're asking us to make a motion? For? Yes. Okay. All right, then I move that we approve the uh, concert with DJ services by Glenn for $675. The uh, contract with the Brookfield Rod and Gun Club uh, for rent of their space on 929 for $350. And that we approve the uh, contract with McGann Marching Band for their performance on September 17, 2023, with the uh, with the contract to be amended in Section 3, saying that they will receive payment after performance. Second. Before you vote, mm -hmm. if you're going to sec, go ahead and second it. And then For discussion, yeah. yeah. I'll second it. All right. So I just realized the Rod and Gun Club one is also looking for a de the, it to be paid. The rental fee is due 30 days prior to the event. So we'll have to work with them as well. Okay. Um, can I, uh, I move that we modify the motion to uh, require the Ron and Gun Club to accept, uh, to make, receive payment after rental or? We can do the deposit, but we can't pay the whole thing 30 days prior to the to receive event. the balance from yeah, the that, event. That, that we not, yeah, that we not pay the them the balance until after the event. That works. That's yeah. what I was trying to say. Okay, I'll second that. Okay. All in favor? Uh, hold on a minute. Sure. I just want to figure out something here. Absolutely. And I could be completely wrong, but I feel like that wasn't the amount that was agreed upon. Do you know offhand or? No, I do not. Uh, not for for the Rod and Gun Club or for the bands? No, for the, well, I was just looking at the car show. And then. What's the car show got to do with anything? Uh, that, that's the DJ Glenn contract. Or the, yeah, the DJ. Oh, okay. He, he's for, he's I've seen contract. nothing in relation to the car show as far as what's approved and what hasn't. I've seen the Easter egg hunt and the ice cream social. Those are the two things that I have information on. Um, but another just point of clarification. Clarification, like so for the 50s dance, so they have that approved with a fee, but they never voted on the fee because I was at that meeting. Are they supposed to vote on the fees? Yes. Yeah, then yeah, we don't have the minutes. So I, I don't know, they don't have to vote them individually. They can give a lump sum and say, you've got this much money for a 50s dance? Yeah, I, I know that. Was that the 350th committee or was that the cultural council? That's that was the cultural council that we did a joint meeting with. Okay. 
So, so if they don't have an amount that they've approved, then you can still sign a contract, but, but we can't pay the bill until we know right. that they've been approved by the cultural council, that the amount, the dollar amount has been approved. All right. Yeah, because I know like even with the marching band, they haven't, they voted to have the marching band, but they didn't, do they have to also vote on the rate for the marching band? Yeah, they're supposed yeah. to be voting right. everything they spend. So that's not occurring. Okay. So. <laughs> All right. So apparently these contracts were signed by a member of the Cultural Council back in October. At which point I said to them, those contracts are not legal because that person doesn't have the authority to bind the town in a legal contract. Only the select board do, depending on the circumstances. Okay. So, for instance, and that's a big contract right there for twenty one hundred. <laughs> <laughs> so that's why we have them in front of us today. Okay. So I'll vote on it, but it's going to need to be. They're going to need to get their ducks in a row. <laughs> yes. Okay. So, so back so to the vote. Back to the vote. So we have a motion, an amended, an amendment, and a second. So first of all, let's vote on the amendment to include the deposit in the balance payment relative to the gun club as part of the primary motion. All in favor? Aye. 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 All right. On the primary motion to approve the contracts with the stipulations added, all in favor? Aye. And give her approval to give, sign it. it. Yeah, she. Oh, yeah. Well, if we approve the concept of the right, contract, then, she has. Okay. She's already she has, has our go. delegation okay. to sign Aye. once <laughs> they're met. Okay. Aye. 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 Okay. Let's go. All right. Um, employees, staff evaluation discussion. Um, I actually asked for this to get put on the um, agenda. Um, Fundamentally, I mean, probably in 10 years, we haven't complied with either our personnel handbook or best practices to do evaluations for the town staff, right? Um, I wanted to propose that we um, try to re-energize that concept as part of the communication obligations I feel that management has with employees, period, regardless of what industry you're in, even though municipalities are not a corporation, it's still good to talk to people about what the expectations are and how they're doing. says you're incorporated, so I'm going with... Well, there you go. So we're so, incorporated, but not a corporation. So. Is that to be our responsibility? No. So, no. So not, not predominantly. So okay. fundamentally... Um, on, and if you want to talk to it, you can. But I mean, the, the way I understand the bylaw, each each supervisor. It's, it's would not. Have, I don't believe it's a bylaw. It's in the employee right, handbook. handbook. Yeah. And it's a very important distinction. Yeah. Because one can be changed by a vote of the board of selectmen, and the other one cannot. It can be changed by a vote of the town, town meeting. meeting. Yeah. So it's a very important distinction. Uh, but that being said, it is a good business practice, an employer practice for the supervisors to do an annual review of the work of the staff. And then if you would like to broaden that, have the boards and committees that oversee the departments do a review of the department heads. Now, I don't know if you can do that with elected boards. They don't necessarily have any staff. Right. Well, and, and it's kind of it's kind of a little bit of a catch twenty two because we are a decentralized government. So hypothetically, like, um, and I'm just trying to think of a good example. So highway functionally reports directly to us. So we would probably like I would presume that you would help us draft it, but mm -hmm. fundamentally it would be coming from the board. Right. For but you would be reviewing Ryan, and Ryan would re be you, reviewing his the rest of his. So people. have you done any reviews on department heads? As I've a town done, administrator? I did at Amy's six month yeah. window. I did hers. So that's right. the I only mean, I know traditionally probably the select board did it, but, mm -hmm. since, but since hiring a town administrator, are they supposed to handle that part of it? Or well, that it still depends the because every, every town administrator position is different because this isn't a position that was created by charter. 
nor was it a creation by bylaw, nor are the duties defined in contract. Those are the three ways that you can, uh, primary ways. Um, and the job description does not- Leaves it nebulous. Not give me- Does not give her supervisory. The charge or supervisory gotcha. authority to do that. Gotcha. So, like I said, what I would what I would suggest is that each department head do their own um, people. staff do their that own that people. report to them, right. and then the board that oversees that department does the would be requested to do the, the supervisor. So the water commission would do Dennis. Dennis would do Holly. The chief of police would do the officers. You would do the chief. Right. Um, I would say that you would also do. Ryan as well, and myself. Yep. Um, I could do the treasurer, or you could do the treasurer. I would do the administrative staff and the um, custodial staff, and Mike would do his people. Right. If he wanted if he to, choose, if he because chooses he's to, elected. he's elected, so we don't mm -hmm. really have Brenda any Brenda has no one. Right. Yeah. And she's elected, so there's you can do a review right. on board, her, but they, likewise, you have no assessors. authority to do yeah. that. The assessors would do the principal assessor. The principal assessor would do his clerk. So it, it like that says it's very decentralized. Yeah, yeah. It's very decentralized. so and and functionally this time around we would be doing it against job descriptions. But I'd like to also I'd like to set kind of like a 90 day target to have one have the reviews done against their current job descriptions, and two to set goals for the coming fiscal year relative to performance related to those goals, or related mm -hmm. to those job mm -hmm. descriptions. Um, it seems like a good way to start off a fresh year would be to actually start having that type of transparent communication with the town employees. Mm -hmm. so, mm -hmm. I agree. So, um, but that's my proposal is basically set a 90 day, we'll call it target, since we can only enforce it for a certain subset. Mm -hmm. um, request that those boards which have people that they would be responsible for evaluating do so. Um, and, you know, I basically like to just keep track of the ones that actually get done so that even if it's just through, you know, a little bit of public shaming, we can get folks to hopefully come online. Mm -hmm. so. so do we have to vote on that? Or? Uh, probably best. Yeah, probably best. So uh, what I would what I would recommend is that you vote on on providing giving direction to the yeah and the time frame. Vote on on you know putting this out there in the time frame and and then commit to coming back and seeing how it went. Yeah. Okay. What time do the vote? What's that? He's good at the emotions. Yeah, you can I can see you. I can see your brain going. How My do I phrase this in emotion? How do I how do I phrase this in emotion? All right. Um, I recommend that we um, request uh, request mm -hmm. all department heads to uh, perform an evaluation of the their direct reports um, by June fifteenth of this year and that we request all supervisory boards to review the, uh, their relevant department heads and that we direct ourselves to um, review the department heads that report up through or to the, the board of the select board um, again by June 15th. And did that cover it? I think so. It sounds like it, yeah. Second. So. <laughs> all in favor? Aye. 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 All right. That's a wrap. So next is uh, approving the select board minutes of uh, the, the three two twenty three ones were in your email. Did everybody get a chance to review them? Yes. Okay. I did not. I was. I also sent off. you the ones from the executive session meeting the other day. I sent them to you. I think yep. the next day. Yeah. So those would also be. And then, uh, so we'll give you guys a couple minutes, or Tom, if you want yeah. a couple minutes yeah. to yeah, scan I just, I just need to look at the executive session. I, already, I read the other one while Brad was doing his research. Yeah. And then, uh... 
All right, I'm good. All right. All right, so do I have a motion to uh, accept the, to approve the minutes as written? Or you have for, that. Uh, for 3-2? You have that motion. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. I saw, we also had 313 indicated. For the library. Oh, that's, that's in the, in the it's on the it's dark just bottom a, of your packet, just to acknowledge. Oh, it's, that's just no, acknowledging the receipt of the it's, table It's loose oh. on the table. Okay, so that's acknowledging the receipt of the minute. Yeah, that's all that is. Okay. So they were sent to Karen, but they were actually supposed to go to Brad. And so Karen thought they were supposed to be on the agenda. Because normally oh. you don't get the library minutes. Right. So and they're on the agenda. Brad. Yeah. Although, and it was already posted, so. Yeah. Okay, all right. So, so it's just saying, hey, we got these things. So, so can I get a motion to acknowledge receipt of the minutes from the Board of Trustees, Library Board of Trustees? You have that motion. All right. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Mr. Holcraft, the floor is yours. Oh, well, thank you. I don't Appreciate have any. Glad to see you tonight, Tom. We made it. <laughs> I was here last week, too. I know. I, know. I, I only missed two weeks ago. I'm sorry, two meetings ago. Okay. Sorry, it's hard to make it from Florida. Yeah. <laughs> uh, so, I guess we'll talk about the bylaws. Sure. Who's following them and who's enforcing them and all that good stuff. Because uh, the first thing I bring up is that you put a non-resident on the finance board or the advisory board, whatever you want to call it. And he was a member of your board, and you know that. Yep. You put him on six months later, and uh, he's making recommendations for our town financially, and he's not even a resident. That was entirely my fault. Because unless there's a bylaw that says you can't, and I should have checked the bylaws, but I didn't. Um, oh, you did. I didn't. I didn't check the bylaws that the advisory board, because I have all the other towns that I've worked in, they've had other members from outside of town that were on their advisory committees because they had financial backgrounds. Gotcha. So I didn't realize that you had to be a resident to be on the advisory committee. And as soon as we found out, he was asked, he was notified, the advisory committee was notified, and he only attended, I think, two of their meetings. So as soon as he found yeah, out, more than two, but that's, as soon as he found yeah. out, we removed him immediately. As soon as I found out, that same day, actually, which that was entirely right. my fault. But the select board, you guys voted him in. You guys took the vote that night to put him on the board. Yep, absolutely. We, did. we made that was that so, was that was not correct. That was our mistake. Okay, we were, so and once trying to, try to be up on the law bylaws, you know, because mm -hmm. other people are being asked to follow them so you have to, you guys are the you guys are the leaders so you should agree and i know you knew so i i understand that too but well once we identified the issue then it was remediated so yeah yeah i mean that, that issue was resolved right yep. i brought it to uh, me and kelly talked about it and mm -hmm. it was resolved so um yeah i think while you were still talking to me i was typing the email you're done sorry yeah. my bad i should have never done that right um Second of all, there's a lot of other bylaws in the town right now being violated by certain employees, board members, et cetera, et cetera. Um, I'm not gonna mention names, but I think you should look into it and see what's going on here and something should be done about it. Some action should well, be Well, which bylaws are you talking about, Mr. Holcraft? Uh, well, one of them is a uh, employee individual that's uh, action elected official and they're not even living in town and they're on the board. I think and that's that's I know when I got accused of that it was a big to do, but whenever anyone else does it it's it's okay. You know, well, it's, who's <clears> elected <throat> that doesn't live in town? Well I'm not gonna the person's well, not can here. you tell me after so I know? Because yeah, I, I can't I can, yeah, but I don't want to say it, you know. The okay. person's not here, I don't think that's fair yet, All right. You know. But uh, I think that's you know, Well I, I think that's a legitimate open meeting topic, isn't it? It is, but it, it is. We can't like we can't hide the name of the person. But if he's not willing to tell us the person in yeah, the meeting, think, you know, doesn't mean we can't yeah. still act on it. Then that's his call. He has a right. Um, to yeah. No, say my question is, how are we? How, how are we supposed, supposed to, know? to know? Yeah. Well, that's, it's something you have to you have to 
work on that. Yeah. I understand, but the more specifics you can give us, the faster we can take action on it. Right. And, and if, I, if you make it so too before, big, no, we, might, we right, might miss it, I, we might take too right, long. But I, before I, I we running. take too much action on it, you don't have the authority to yeah. act on anybody who's elected. The most you can do is report it to the state. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yep. Right. So there isn't really a lot of but it's, authority it's, you have to do anything about it. Right. I just came, I came up here to talk about the the, the, the bylaws, and that was an example. You asked me for an example of what was being followed. Mm -hmm. Okay. And and that's something that you guys have to take action on because it is one of our bylaws. Well, actually, what I think if you actually listen to what Kelly just said is that we may not actually be able to take action. We may only have the capability of reporting it to the state because. Um, for elected officials because we have a decentralized form of government unlike if you have a mayor or right. a city council and that that type of construct um, we might not be able to take direct action if the townspeople no that's not how it works because i lived in town and you remember when you select selectmen said that it was i was not living in town and i was living in town and they did take action well that's yeah, that was for an appointed position not an elected position uh, Yes. Appointed or elected, but elected is a bylaw in our town, and that's when you people have to take action. On so that's it. actually a state law, not a bylaw. Right. That's why we'd have to notify the state. state. Can but you we, cite us the bylaw, specific bylaw that I don't you have feel is being? But I, that, I, again, that would be helpful. I'm sure Kelly can pull, pull it right up. You know. But but you're the one who's saying the bylaws are being violate, violated, which tells correct. me that you have reviewed the bylaws and you know and, which one's being violated. And okay. coming here without that information makes it harder for us to take action on your concerns. So the bylaw states that if in the town of Brookfield, you have to live in town to be on an elected board. Okay. okay? That's the gist of the law. Okay. Okay. Now, if you want me to get that for you in writing, I can do that I for think, you. I think that's that, that's probably sufficient guidance. Right. right. Yeah, and, as, and actually, the, 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 the only the only and, and um, the, only, the only the only authority we have for a violation of a bylaw, if I remember correctly, is we can um, ask the chief to issue a civil citation of I think a hundred dollars is the maximum uh, penalty that we're. <laughs> allowed to inflict according to our town bylaws. So I, I, I'm not going to say that it's not there because I haven't looked for it. Okay. Oh, but I know it's there. When I, when I looked in the bylaws and I did a search for um, anything to do with being a residence mm -hmm. or anything like that. There, there's nothing in this bylaw that addresses any elected position okay. in the town's bylaw. But it is a state law, and that oh, actually be, outranks the bylaws. Right, so the we state need will to override what we have. That's right. Correct. So, so you give me some more information later, and okay. and I'll see what we can do to make sure that that is that is rectified. Okay, sounds good. Okay. I like that. Um, all right, so you're going to follow up on bylaws and make sure, okay. Are there any others that you're yeah, aware of that you... Not right, not, not right okay. now, but I will be bringing up some other ones in the future for you. Okay. Um, I just wanted to make it see that making sure that you people are the ones that are in charge and supposed to be leading, so mm -hmm. you should be making sure that they're all being followed. Uh, public access. Hmm. I've been told many times, it's been over four years now, this thing's been off. All the equipment's broken, all this, that, and the other. It's, no. Just a certain individual didn't want to continue doing it. And it's still off. And it's a disservice to the town's residents. Mm -hmm. And I want to know when are we going to get this thing back on? And Charter pays us every year X number of dollars to keep this studio running with equipment and manpower. In town, this town has voted two years ago monies to make sure that the thing would get running again, and it hasn't happened. So let me tell you what I've done since I started here. We've, we've advertised for the position so that we could get the cable. We need somebody to get into the studio, and so we were gonna hire somebody to do that. I've advertised in the paper. I've advertised on Indeed. 
I've advertised on the town website. I've advertised on the state website. I have received one applicant and only one applicant, which we went through the whole process of getting a wage approval and we went through the process of getting a job description and we he went up to the studio and he met with the and we had him appointed and, his, and he knew exactly what he was getting into and when we said okay when can you start he said I'm not going to do it unless you give me double what you're asking what you're offering and I said we don't have the authority to do that I can't just double the pay that would have changed all of the advertisements right if I could give him double what it was and so he didn't want the job and he didn't take it so that's that was I don't remember how many months ago that was so I've reached out to Tantasqua to see if they have anybody who's interested in their tech program and they referred me to Sturbridge who I recently reached out to Sturbridge to talk to them because they have an outside company now I'm looking at trying to find an outside company to come and run it because we can't find a human being who wants to do this. Well, we have a committee. We have two, three people on that committee still. There's only one person on the committee, and it's Sharon. Yeah, and I thought there was another person on it as well. They I resigned. Don't, I don't believe. I don't they believe resigned. so. Yeah, I don't believe that they're yeah. still on it. So, I have contacted the student who's interested. So we're going to see if we can get her in there and get her trained <coughs> to start doing this. But I can't create a human being. That to do the job. I don't think getting a student to do what we need to be done is going to be acceptable for the town. We need something. I understand that, but nobody wants the job. Nobody wants to do it. I don't. I don't know how I'm supposed to create somebody to fill a position that nobody is is interested in. Well, we're going to have some kind of some kind of we we voted monies in. We did. Okay, so, so I mean, do we need to double? Do we need to pay them fifty dollars an hour to do it? How much? Well, they they wouldn't do it for twenty three dollars or twenty five dollars an hour. So, and he wanted double. So, do I got? I do. We need now have to do yeah. fifty dollars an hour. No, I think like I think you have Sturbridge. I'm familiar with what Sturbridge does. They do live uh -huh. the residents, and you can even call in. And talk, yeah. Talk to the selectmen certain nights. But when are we? So are you working with them, trying to see what? That I have is? I have correspondence out to them, but I haven't received a reply. So my plan is that next Monday is I'm going to call them to see if maybe my email went into their spam folder. But I was given their name by the tech teacher at Tantasqua to right. to talk to Sturbridge. And if I need to, I'll drive to Sturbridge and see if I can talk to somebody and find out what. Because I, I was told they have two different companies that do it. If we can find a company to outsource it to. We have the money. Yeah, we yeah, actually, do. Actually, we have the money. We just got to find somebody to do the work. Mm -hmm. So That's why when we voted the money last year at the, at the town meeting, yeah. and you questioned the way I wrote the Warren article, why does this say salary and, and payroll? Because we did 20 for the cable coordinator, remember? And then we did an additional 70 for equipment plus... Um, services services Repair. plus payroll so that we within the 20 for a year didn't break out to enough hours to get the job done at any more than I think 23 or 25 I think it's 23 dollars an hour I can't really remember off the top of my head I have the option of, of snagging some of that 70 and using it toward payroll but I don't have the town's permission to raise the salary yet so nobody wants to do it for twenty thousand dollars a year. So that's what we have to look at: is in, can we get a company in to do it for twenty? Because they're just economies of scale, yeah. fundamentally. Right. So well, there's companies that do this for the, like you said, for Sturbridge and other towns. Yes. So I just need their names. Yeah. Well, so I'll get the name if you need it. Would you? I would love that. Oh, that I would appreciate that so home. much. I'll ask myself. Yeah, that's there's what I was just saying. I'll drive down there if I have to. <clears throat> But yeah, but so I, mean, I just found out that there, and I and I reached out to Brimfield, and Brimfield, it's the same person that refused the job here. So that was a dead end. So is it a requirement or something? Is what a requirement? Is it a requirement for it to be on television or? 
<laughs> it's just that we receive money. No, we, we, receive, we receive money from, from to, Charter right, to... Right. So to, we should be to, using to, it, is what you're getting right. To yeah, provide that right. service, and we're not... <laughs> is that money still piling up, Kelly? Well, we, as long as we're not, it's still, yeah, we're still receiving funds from them. And um, because the contract is coming up, if we don't use those funds, they have no reason to give us funds in the future. Yeah. So I would like to see them get expended properly to get this up and running. And I swear that I have been working on this. I just haven't found a human being willing to do it. So, so we, uh, well, we were talking about getting new equipment. I mean, we but did. I keep get new equipment, get new equipment, I mean. And, but you get the equipment and then no one's running the show over there in the studio. You're absolutely right. I mean, you, you don't need, I mean, we've had, I, I, when I was on the committee, we had junk equipment and we made sure it was up every week. And if there was a problem, we had Charter come in and help us fix it. Mm -hmm. And they got manpower to come in and, and, and they helped us fix, you know. Yeah. Fi you know, fix our equipment, whatever. And now we get new equipment, and then by that time, we said, oh, we need new equipment. That so equipment. I don't know about running the cable channel itself, but we do have somebody now that's going to be editing the videos and putting them up on YouTube, which is better than nothing. But YouTube's been down, too. YouTube's not down. Well, it's, it's, not, it's, not that it, it's not that it's down. It's, it's nobody has uploaded any video. That's what I mean. Yeah. So, so we have somebody, so we have somebody, somebody now. That when was the last time it was on YouTube? September? Someone said. Is that oh, gosh, no. It was 2021. Yeah. It's been that long? Been a year. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, so yeah. Yes. I think the last Just meeting I saw up there was 2021. So, but like I said, we do have somebody that is is just starting, and they're going to be editing the the meetings and putting them up there, so that we're going to catch up on what YouTube. What do you mean editing them? Well, they need to have um, like the beginning part put in, like this is the select okay. meeting, yeah. or this is the town meeting. That's the only editing that gets yeah. done. They don't do anything to the middle part, right. okay. and then Just this is the end. It. Here's some music, la 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 la, that kind of stuff. <laughs> Tune in next week, same Brookfield time. Same, same Brookfield Station. Yeah, right. So, okay, so we have some kind of a timeline here, or, or, or are we going to wait another four or five years? <laughs> Well, you're, you're being serious, but you're not. So you're also, you're, you're totally cutting out the portion that for two of the four years, all the meetings were on Zoom, all of them were recorded, and all of them were right. available through links on the website. So let's at least take that off the plate. During that same period of time, you couldn't get a technician for love or money to address some of the connectivity issues that we had over at the school. Well, let's that not was forget that the these school. are the COVID years. Right. So, so I just, I, I just, I just, you know, I, I appreciate your love of hyperbole, yeah. John. But um, please, you know, let's let's keep in mind that it, it's not as simple as you would like to portray it. Okay, so well, I, I, was I just want to put that. Seven years, and it wasn't a big to do, you know. But you didn't have COVID during those seven years, okay, right? Well, we can't so we get 20, no, 21. The first two years. The first two years. That's the problem. It's been off almost 20 the last one years, one, right? 20 and 21. It's been yeah. off almost five years. And and I'm not, not disclaiming that. Okay. I'm just saying that it's not the simple thing. And when we came back from COVID, getting people out of their houses has been very, very trying, very trying. We've got a huge um, gap in employment. We've got, it, it's just, it's not as easy as it was before because people don't want to come back out and work out of their house. There are more and yeah, more people that's, that's, working that's, that's in the houses. Yeah. We, we, we can't use the pandemic constantly as excuses. I'm not forward. using we the pandemic as an excuse for the prior so, years, but that is so definitely I just, hindrance I, I in just, finding I'm just, somebody. I, it's well, just, I'm going to go to Sturbridge and I'm going to get you. You've got three minutes. Okay, I'm going to go to Sturbridge and I'm going to get some names okay. and, and uh, phone numbers, yep. and, and, and then I'm going to come see you personally again. Okay. And we'll see if we can get something rolling here. Okay. So. And, it's been a long time. And one other thing, there's no bylaw committee in town anymore. Is there a reason for that? Or? I was unaware of it. Well, I was used to have one. Is there a reason I'm, why we, we don't Right have now, it? we're not even able to fill our advisory of, committee. Yeah, I'm, not, I'm not, I'm not. We currently have 23 open committee seats. Yeah. <laughs> so not like, including the bylaw committee. What does the bylaw committee do? 
So hypothetically, they advise the selectmen on adjustments that should be made to the bylaws. So that's what we have a town administrator for and that she's going through and as a lawyer, going through and reviewing the bylaws and providing us recommendations. So that's, that's why you, that's that's why you, Kelly? Yeah, that that's why you had so many changes last year. Yeah. All of the changes other than the citizen's petition so, were put in there because of my reviewing the bylaws. So I, I haven't been, I haven't been too cranked up about trying to fill the bylaw committee where we have a lawyer to help us review yeah. our bylaws and, it, and, and when I am made aware of one that needs a change, it gets put right, in. To you? Yes. To your attention? Yes, it does, yes. Okay. And then I do what I can to write or rectify, compare it against the existing bylaws so we don't create an inconsistency. And that's, that's literally where all the bylaw changes came from last year. Okay. All right. Well, I'll do my part down in Sturbridge for you, and then... Uh, that would be great. I would really appreciate that, because I've been struggling with and, this one. And if I have to, I'll get you a state bylaw with the uh, elected thing. Okay. Great. All Anything right. else? So I'll expect to see you on Monday then, right? Maybe Tuesday. Mondays are horrible, but I'll try to come in Monday. Okay. All right. I'm here in the I gotta get down. I'm going to get down to Sturbridge and see them first, so that might be Monday I'm going to see them. All right. So, so I would... I'll, I'll see you next I'll week. I'll be here in Mon on Monday morning, and then okay. I have Wednesday. I'm at the Municipal Law Conference all day. Okay. Uh, so I won't be around Wednesday, but I'll be there Tuesday, and I'll be there for Thursday. You'll be there when Tuesday? When Tues else? Tuesday and Thursday, I'll be there. Okay. I will call you first and make sure you're here. Okay. Tell you that I have something or I don't. All right. I appreciate that. Okay. okay. All right. All right. Thanks. Great. Thank, thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Tom. Not gonna thank them too. Ooh, thank you, Cole. The rest of the board. <laughs> Feel special, Tom. <laughs> All right, thank you. My mother right. always said I was special. <laughs> All right, okay, budget. budget. Oh my back hurts. Okay. <laughs> oh, the, the budget. Oh goodness. I've got to teach y'all how to format an Excel. <clears throat> oh, you know, <laughs> I printed myself one out I can read. <laughs> the problem is that is, is, a, basic, that we that are, is a basic. We are very, very environmentally about our conscious paper. and thrifty with our paper. Okay, mm -hmm. and instead of so, like my version uh, that I printed for myself. That does not have all the columns. It only has the pertinent columns. is 24 pages long, mm -hmm. but I can see it. Correct. <laughs> yeah. Which we can. I can see that. Kelly, you have my permission to go double-sided and make it a little bigger. <laughs> <laughs> Same paper, more legible. So, anywho. All right. So the last time we talked about the budget. <clears throat> You got glasses. I was going to. I may or may not have my. Without my contacts. We talked basically about the salary increase. Yes. So, if we do a three percent salary increase and approve everything else the way it stands, we have three hundred thousand dollars in excess left. Okay. Because we got some more solid numbers. The insurance didn't come in at 10%, it came in at 8.4. That makes a big difference. So that made a little bit of a, a dip in it, right? Um, yeah. Yeah. Kelly, as a, uh, as a baseline metric, what was our excess levy last year? I don't know that number off the top of my head. Okay, is that it's just that tells me how much I think it was around four. I was gonna okay. say it. I, I thought it was, was around four. Roughly okay. around four, I maybe just, maybe a little over four. Okay. I could I I, I, I know I have it and I could look it up from my time on advisory last year, but thank you. That's that tells me what I wanted to know. Yeah, about. roughly around four. <clears throat> um, and that's one, another reason that we have excess and we will have actually more than that because that does not include new growth or the change in values. Mm -hmm. So in the in the spreadsheet that I sent you, my favorite toy, my recap simulator. Yeah. It when you plug in the stuff into the recap sheet, it automatically jumps over to the levy page and gives you the difference. Mm -hmm. So you can just look at the top of the levy limit page. Mm -hmm. But I used last year's values because our values aren't set, mm -hmm. and I used. Um, because I know that those are solid numbers and they're not going to go down because the market was still high last year. And I also used um, 
the new insurance number. So theoretically, this number could even be higher with the way real estate values, or that doesn't get well. Especially well, so with, well with new with new growth. Yeah, right, so, we have a lot of new growth. So we we have a huge amount of new growth. So it's entirely possible. But is, we don't know if it's taxable new growth. Right. So in order for it to be taxable it has new to growth, be it has to July of last year kind of thing. It has to be built oh. by January first of this year, of of last year. Yeah. January 1st of 2022 um, is because we don't do supplemental. In the, in the 30, we have 30 new houses that just aren't built, so those aren't even calculated. Those don't count. Those, those will count next future those year. Next year. Yeah. So when does the property become taxable? When January 1st of the prior calendar year. So for FY24, mm -hmm. the new growth will be calculated on the January 1st numbers for 2022. Really? So anything that was became occupied in, in during 2022 doesn't count to the 20, fiscal year 24? That's right. It's calendar. It's calendar. So we're in calendar 23. Yes. So new growth is calculated in the prior calendar Based year. off of January 22. Based, yes. You can't. So, if, okay. so, so let's say, so, for instance, I buy a restaurant. I build a house on January 2nd, mm -hmm. 2022. I don't get taxed until 2025. Hmm. Okay. That's if I can, like, you know, Minecraft, world of mine, you know, Minecraft, that I can just build a house in one day mm -hmm. and live in it. They might do, so Al might go out and catch things at a certain percentage complete. So those percentage complete would be, so if, so on January 1st, something was half built, he would have the whole value decre decreased by 50%. And he's able to tax them on that? Yes, because that's what's there right. on January 1st. Yeah, so and that's right. typically how it works. There are supplemental um, assessments allowed, but I don't know if, if uh, Brookfield does them. And I don't, honestly, it came about after I left assessing, so not totally familiar Definitely. with the way it works. So I don't want to opine as to whether or not it's done here. Okay. So just, uh, just to make sure, I, I, I want to wrap my head around this correctly. So if, assu um, assuming that I could build a house in one day, yes, and I built it all on December 31st of 2022, yep. so just, just built it, when would, and so, and so on January 1st, Al comes by and it's all done and it's, I got my certificate occupancy, everything's done. Mm -hmm. When would I get my first tax bill, or when would that shoot? So you, the tax bill for something other than the land. Yeah, yeah, for the, specifically for the for the changes to the property, because the land all right, was all. So if it's taxed. there on January first of twenty twenty two. Yes. Then it goes into the taxes for FY 25. twenty five. Twenty yeah twenty five because twenty twenty two is calculated in twenty twenty three. Mm hmm. Which is actually FY24. Got it. So, effectively, so the new growth we're talking Making about. Making myself nauseous. <laughs> so, the, so, the new growth we're talking about in context of the fiscal year 24 budget is all stuff that was built in 2020? No, in 2022, because it's calculated for 2023, which is actually fiscal 2024. But I just thought. I thought something that was built on Dece on December 31st, 2022, wasn't going to get a tax bill until 2024. Until oh, which is because it's I a fiscal it's, year. I thought you said fiscal year 25. No, 24. Okay. If I did, I misspoke. It's 24. Okay. So new growth as of last January. So it's effectively a if it's built if it's done on December 31st, it's an 18 month lag. It's close to that, yeah. I okay. think so, yeah. All right. yeah. I think that's roughly correct. All right, so the, fis so the fiscal year 24 new growth is what was built in 22, mm -hmm. and the, the, this year's fiscal 23 new growth is what was built in 21. So, built in 22, shows up in new growth. Of, I'm sorry, it was, if it was built in 22, it'll be fiscal year 24 new growth. Yes. So you back everything up a year, if it's built in 21, it was fiscal year, it was fiscal year 23 new growth. Yes. Okay. Thank you. Just wanted to make sure I had that right. I always thought new growth was more forward-looking, but 
Well, like I said, they, they allow supplemental now, so mm -hmm. they change the rules that you, of what you can assess, and mm -hmm. I don't know if Brookfield follows that. It would change the answer completely if they do. Yeah, and, and Al snuck out while we were talking. That son of a gun. <laughs> That's okay. <clears throat> okay. Um, so I did the three, like I said, I put in the 3% for salary that you had discussed, and then just put everything across exactly the way it showed up um, on the budgets, I think. There might be a couple that I fiddled with, but that is, when I say fiddle, it, it just, there would be reasons, and there would be in my notes why I would have, I would have made a different uh, recommendation than what was requested. But I don't see any off the top of my head here. So I don't know if you how you want to do this. Do you want to do you want to go through each department and vote yay or nay or and look at their expenses? Because you voted the salary, so how do you want to handle this is, oh, I did level fund the like the assistant inspector wages instead of the, what what was requested. Was that the one that was requested down? So we have we have which, like, which inspector? So it, we'll start with the building inspector, right? Mm -hmm. And that's um, account number two four one was where they start. So if you look over to the far left, you can mm -hmm. see the account numbers. It's, it's so much easier to do it that way. For me, anyway, I don't know if that works for you guys. So the, we have the building inspector, which that got the 3%, but then I level funded the um, assistant. I did the same with plumbing. I did the same with wiring. I did the same, um, I, I level funded the stipend for the emergency management because that went up from $400 to, uh, to 818 so that was a very substantial jump. Yeah. Uh, are you talking about the emergency, the EMA stipend? Yes. Because I'm showing that going up. I saw a 1960 request in fiscal year 24 against an 1800 fiscal year 23 budget. But look at FY22. No, I, I, yeah, there was. I know there was a big jump from 22 to 23. Right. So I, I, I recommended. I recommended level funding that. Okay. These are these are the changes that I made. They're, I don't know that they're on. No, they're not. They're not. No, on I'm, oh, I'm sorry. I'm so not, I'm not we, seeing didn't, level we, we didn't get the we didn't get the current um, copy, and I, I that's why I was on my phone. I wasn't being rude. I was looking for a few. No, I I thought that I sent this to you last week actually, because that's when I did it. Was okay. Last week. Was it last week? I, may just I thought that I had sent you the new one, but uh, maybe I didn't send it. Um, because I, you hadn't voted on anything, mm -hmm. so all I did was plug in the numbers they asked for, and I'm just telling you what I level funded. Mm -hmm. as so so to the thing I would say is that I would, I would typically, and this is just my perspective on it, and, and based on my time on advisory, um, typically we, we did not level fund the assistants. We gave them the raise as well because they're functionally hourly workers even though it shows as a stipend. They're, it's not like paid out quarterly, it's paid if and, they go on site. And I understand that. And I did that with the animal inspector because, no I didn't, I level funded the animal inspector in my, in my spreadsheet. But I understand that, but you, you have inspectors that go out maybe three times a year. What's 400 divided by three? That's one hell of an hourly wage. No, right, but I thought I thought we have set hourly wages for them in the. No, we don't. We don't. No, they're they're paid. They're paid that stipend. That whether stipend, they go out whether they go out or not, they just come in and collect it. Or they, it's it's asked for by their department head. So that's why I level funded it because it seems like a really well paid. Thanks for being on call. Okay. Well, I mean, that's the risk. It's on call. Right. Yeah. Exactly. Exactly. Okay. I'll double check to see if there's what, an hourly you, rate, you, but I don't think there double is. Double check because I thought that I thought all of them they only got paid if they submitted for it, based on actually executing some of the work. 
That was my understanding. Okay. I'll check. I'll double check on assistance that. Assistance work. I'll but double check on that. Because if you look at the prior years, nobody's taken it. They just haven't used it? They haven't used it. Nobody's had to go out. So right. nobody's taken any money. Yeah. So that's why I said I thought that they were basically only paid if they submitted, and I thought it was some some rate that we were paying them, and that that budget was basically budget for that hourly rate to come out of. Yeah, I didn't. I haven't seen that because, like I said, they haven't gone. Yeah, I would just check stuff. with the primary inspectors and see how that's typically. I'm going to check the payroll okay. instead of checking with the inspectors okay. because. Payroll will have the records going back to 2015, and, and who however knows if they're you, actually going to even remember. However you, you want to handle so. Okay. Um, so, because based on what I've seen in, in past budgets, it looks like nobody's using it anyways. Yeah, that's now that's entirely possible, and I, I would not say that in, in any way, shape, or form. So, besides putting in the three percent for the for the employees, mm. was there were there any other changes that you had made? No, actually. Okay. No, I did the three percent. So, I, and I only did it to get a total, so you could have an idea of what would happen with the levy limit, because you get to vote on all of this stuff. This was right. just to give you an idea. No, a ballpark I, no, I understand that. Thank you. Of what it was, I wasn't like saying do this or that. So. Right. So how do you gentlemen want to do it? Do we want to go through, start with our own budget and work our way down through to see if there's any questions, concerns, or adjustments that we want to recommend? Oh, Board of Health, the Board of Health clerk. Right. They need a 15 hour a week clerk, 10 to 15 hours a week. It can't be absorbed by the Board of Health, aided by the all boards clerk, because that job wasn't intended to be a full-time position. Yep. So soon out of the shoot. That's right. It's supposed to be part time. Yep. And the work that that is being Goes asked to be it. absorbed is is in excess of what the person has yes, available. Because because it was a board of health member in the town hall who did a phenomenal amount of legwork and a lot of dealt with a lot of people and dealt with a lot of requests over the phone and walk in people. So those hours weren't actually calculated. Because they were we paying know, we for it, the they, hours they were, were, they were volunteering they were to do it. The prior chairman did a phenomenal amount of work. The current chairman is doing the same. She's doing a lot of work as well. Um, but that was also something; those hours weren't calculated. And Brianna, their clerk, this was something she did full time as her job in another town, so she could kind of cross and and do some extra for Brookfield while she was at her other job because we shared a health agent and we shared a this and a that so she could get little things done. So those hours weren't accounted for. And now what's happened is we, we shifted the responsibility to the all boards clerk, not realizing that the those hours schedule. were even in existence right. mm -hmm. until the job started getting done. Now the job is taking between 15 and 19 hours a week just for Board of Health. So it can't be absorbed. So they do absolutely need a, a board of health clerk. They need okay. their own clerk. So is it sixty-four hundred dollars plus whatever three percent enough? For no. no, no, because if you do the hourly rate, okay, which is nineteen dollars an hour times fifteen. That's what I was going to do. Yeah. yeah. Times 52.1. That's, that's what you need for an annual salary. That's in the 15 to 17 thousand dollar range, I think. Right, roughly. Yeah, it's 14.8. Yeah. So. So call it 15. So call it 15. If, yeah, if you do it 15 hours, if you do it 10 hours a week, and I don't know if they'll find somebody who's interested in a 10 hour a week job. I think a 15 hour a week. Is no, more I think we're going to run into the same issue. No, I think I think I think I think a 15 hour a week job is possible because they can do it basically. I, I, it's probably no longer correct term to use, but it's like a mother's hours position. Yeah. Fundamentally. Yeah. So. It's the, I can do it between the hours of like nine and two. I can put the kid on the bus. I can get, get them off. Right. 
And and they you have to figure they have because the board of health is now going to be meeting twice a month, so they're going to have two night two nights a month that they're going to be out. Yeah. So it definitely needs more than what we can unfortunately what we can provide because we right. didn't budget for an additional full time person in the extra benefits. Right. Mm -hmm. So, and I, I think it makes more sense to get an additional part-time person than it does to. So that was the yeah, one of the, that's, I, that's the that's one of the changes because you asked me and I was like, ah, I don't want to forget to tell you that I right I put that in there as a placeholder until you decide what you want to do for them. Um, and so I sent that email. Are we, we going to be able to find maybe. somebody for nineteen dollars an hour? I don't know. I don't think so. <laughs> I don't know. Not where you can do all this other gig work for more money, but we'll see. I mean, you what, may want to offer more. I don't know what, what a Board of Health clerk's rate is. Um, and this just developed over the last week yeah. can and we, a half. Can so. we, how hard would it be to find out like what the local market rate is on that? I could ask again. <laughs> I'm sorry. No, my people are like, why don't you just ask us for everything, Kelly? <laughs> well, tell them then. But then you would get send to talk to them so much. Send, send me your budget. Send me everything you have. I want all 133 of you to send me <laughs> your your budget broken down by right. line item. <laughs> and I, I want I don't want lump sums and salaries. I want hourly wages. <laughs> sorry. That's all right. That's all right. And could you please send me any contracts and collective bargaining agreements? As well? <laughs> it's been my week. That's been my week. And there are a couple things that I need to know next week. Can you tell me them in advance? <laughs> yes. I don't know what they are yet. So, so uh, I haven't. Um, I sent an email to the chair of the Board of Health explaining that the job couldn't absorb the Board of Health hours and why. And when I sent the email, I went. Back, I wrote it and edited it and wrote it and edited it and wrote it and edited it. And it sounded good, and I sent it. And then I realized after getting a terse, that's good response. That it sounded like we were pulling the clerk out from under them, which was not the intent. Yeah. But she cannot work any more than four hours a week because then she goes over the. The mm -hmm. threshold. The threshold, and we can't do that. So Maureen is supposed to come in and see me next week, and we're going to discuss it. And I don't know what the Board of, the board of Health, I told them, you know, that you really need somebody for, for at least 15 so, hours so, a week. So they may come back and say, this is what we want to do, and this is what we want to pay. I just put that in there as a placeholder. Okay. So when you have that conversation, let's... Mm -hmm. In the interim, I hate to ask, do we have any budget anywhere that we could potentially get somebody in through a temp agency for like two days a week well, for a certain number of hours? So now now we're crossing over into this is not my job. And that's going to cost more than 20. Because I don't have, I don't hire for the Board of Health. They're elected. Oh, that's true. That's their job. And I did yeah. say that I would help them advertise and explain, you know, how to go about finding somebody. Got it. Um, and that's okay to say it's not your job. Yeah. I'm, I'm okay with that. I just, I forget very easily. That's no, that's nice. okay. That's I mean, when you and these aren't benefit eligible positions. Correct. I mean, market rate is almost 25 to 30. It's, if you, if you it's, don't, if you, if you don't, if you're not providing benefits, it's, it's bonkers. 25. Mm -hmm. yeah, yeah, it's bonkers right now. Yeah. I was, and that was the number in my head was yeah. that anything less than 25, we're not going to find somebody. No. But. I've had. That's that's what, that's what we're paying our all boys clerk right now, nineteen an hour. Yeah. So we we need to. Um, that's why I use that as a base pay, which is actually more than they were paying Brianna with all of her experience. I know. That's crazy. As I know, we're not going to lower her pay to do more work. <laughs> it's not, well, not out work. That's going to create a. I didn't realize we were paying the all boys clerk nineteen, but that's going to create an ancillary issue if. She knows someone else gets hired at 25. And, and she will, because this is our right. public record. Right. Right. <laughs> right. So, I don't see anything. I'm going to keep looking to make sure I didn't change anything. What's that? I'm going to keep looking to make sure I didn't change anything else. To keep my, just to remind me that it's something you need to talk about. Okay. Right, what, what did the insurance come back as, just so that we have record of it? All right, so the insurance came back as
And was it the health or was it the, the general? This is the medical okay. insurance. Mm -hmm. the, the general insurance, the general liability insurance is going up 10%. Maya told us that. I don't have it in writing yet, but that's what Maya told us. Okay. It's going up 10% because of the roof claims. Right. So group the health. group health insurance yeah. is going up 8.4%. So it's going from 691 to 749. 749 or 39? 49. 749.044 is 8.4 percent of what we budgeted last year. But if you look at the prior year, you see that we level funded it because we had we didn't have to pay as much. So when I did the math on what we're oh, paying, oh no, what monthly, happened? No, I'm going to tell you what what happened was. The outsourced treasurer came up with a ridiculously high number through some bizarre calculations that we that I gave him an arbitrary number to cut it down to that was still way over budgeted, but I was at least able to get everybody to align on it. So if we if we look at what it was the prior year and what we spent, yep. there's well over a hundred thousand dollars gap. All yep. right. So this year, because it went up last year. I think it was like 7% or something yeah. like that. Um, we level funded it. What we've paid out and what we're scheduled to pay gives us a, like about a $38,000 buffer. Okay. So if That's we do this thing. again yeah. with the 8.4, we'll, that will give us another like $38,000 buffer in case, just in case somebody jumps on, on in the middle of the year. Yep. Perfect. And that'll cover one family, roughly. A little more than one family. You can probably do one family and one single. One individual. Yeah. yeah. Okay. That's a good plan. So I like that plan. So that's where the 749044 comes from. Yeah. Okay. Um, The general insurance, we have that number from Maya, I think. Is that the one that's the 168, Karen? Yes. Yeah. And by the way, we did have that other gentleman that was going to compare prices. Yeah, we're, we're looking and at other he, prices. He sent me an email about a week and a half ago, said that he was working on it and have not heard anything sent, so. Okay. Okay. In case we got to jump ship. But we've got to do it prior to May if we're going to jump ship. Okay. So one question that I do have, and this is something that, that, that we had talked about, at least hypothetically, do we want to start to cover more of the employee portion of the health care, in which case we'd have to increase that number another 5% if we were going to start to move from 60% coverage to something higher to be closer to near peer in terms of of benefit coverage since if, if we're going to hold on a 3% a raise, did we want to look at the other benefits that we offer and, and cover a slightly higher percentage? I'm open to it, but I'd, I'd like to get a I'd like to wrap my head a little better around the impact on the um, of this on our levy headroom slash um, total levy amount. Well, so we've got three hundred thousand in excess levy. That, that's going down, and what do you mean it's going down? Uh, the the levy headroom is going down. It was four hundred thousand. It was about four hundred thousand last year, from what you said earlier. Well, but the budget that we were presented with, we didn't have any levy headroom, and we didn't have any room at all. Okay, um, that's. So I, I understand, but fundamentally, the in the increase in the levy drives the increase in the, the tax bills of the citizens of the town. And so I'd like my I'd like to keep that in mind and have an understanding of where we are in terms of the budget before we commit to making changes to that. Or so I have a spreadsheet mm -hmm. for you to wrap your head around mm -hmm. that Amy did today, which shows the town costs at 60, 65, 70, 75, and 80. I also have a list of what all the other towns are and what they're offering, which is what you asked me to do. That is what I asked you to do. So, do you have copies for all of us? Or do we need I can. Some? Karen, we're gonna. These are regular paper. It should be no problem. Mm -hmm. <laughs> we struggled last week with the with the big paper. Yeah. Let me see. I mean, but, 
Thank Kelly, you. that's just the sheet showing how much the insurance budget amount we would need to budget for insurance based on a 60, 65, 70. Nope, 70. it breaks it down by what our costs are and the employee costs are. Okay. And it breaks it so, down with a with a what we currently have, which is a single and a family plan. Mm -hmm. And it also breaks it down with a spouse plus one plan. And so you Ooh, compared this analysis. to what other we've been busy. And you've compared this to the other towns and what their cost sharing. I have a list of what the other co towns are right. cost sharing. That I so I think the other lynch pin to that discussion. They're all Maya. Be, yeah. Where are they? Where are they with wages? You know, are they keeping wages down and keeping this high, or? You know what I'm, I don't know how to well, explain the, this. Well, the, I know the, what you're asking the, me. The, the percentage share has, has been very consistent in those other towns for a number of years. They went yeah. up a number of years ago or else they started higher than we did. Right. Uh, and then she did have, she did provide us the wage information in the previous meeting. So in terms on, of like what on, percentage is. And we're on power. The 3% yeah. is kind the 3 of, the 3% is, 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 is kind of what everybody's doing. That's yeah. pretty much for folks right now. Oh no, I know that, yeah, yeah, yeah. Two and a half to three percent. The question that I have is since we would, since we, we are staying on par and we did the wage adjustments for the Collins Center previously, right, the only other place we have to move Potentially, if we if we think it's the right thing to do, would be to um, Thank you. Uh, in some planned manner take a look at increasing the town cost share on the insurance. Because I'm looking for my little piece of paper that was with all my other pieces of paper. Here's some fee with my other pieces of paper. Um, and by giving us the number of employees, they're just functionally giving us a way to calculate that end number. I don't have the little slip of paper in here. It must still be on my desk. But functionally, I mean, you can also take the gross number and just add 5%. Well, no, it would be, yeah. So, so it would actually be 5% is whatever. It's one. It's five divided by 60, so it's 112. So we'd actually have to do the math a little bit more complicated than just five percent. It's a little bit, it's more than that actually. It's like twelve percent increase That's in the rushed. budget to do a five percent increase in what we cover. Hmm. So, so I, I didn't necessarily want to vote it tonight, but I wanted to bring it up tonight to think mm -hmm. about in terms of the budget fundamentally. Um, so we have, I have, um, Spencer, West Brookfield, East Brookfield, North Brookfield, Warren. I was going to ask Sturbridge, and I know Holland. And the lowest one is Brookfield at 6040. The next lowest is 7525, which I believe is West Brookfield. North Brookfield offers. Um, 70 30 up to 90 10 depending on how long you work there and the other ones were 75 25 and I, I'll, I'll find the list I don't know where the list is but I, it was I thought I had it in this pile but I apparently must have left it upstairs on my desk okay. um, so again I, I wasn't planning on deciding today but I wanted to have the dialogue around it today so have we ever had a review from the employees to their opinions or anything like that? So at the last department head meeting when we had the discussion regarding wages, yeah. well, folks had submitted for the federal COLA and we weren't going to do the federal COLA because it was such an outrageous COLA this year. And that other years we have exceeded the federal COLA by quite a bit, right? Um, one of the things that came out was that um, it has not it has not passed the employee notice that you could hypothetically go to work for another town for the same pay and take home another couple hundred bucks a week because of the fact that the town is covering more, cover more right. health insurance. Right. So, it, and fun, fundamentally they just said, please consider it. It wasn't a demand, it was a, you know, if you really, you know, if you really are gonna walk the walk on 
pay parity, it really is package parity. And currently they don't have package parity. The two changes that came up, or two requests that came up during the department head meeting was to at least have some plan to increase the health care percentage and to um, do the vacation, do changes to the vacation portion of the bylaw because the amount of vacation that folks get is a pittance compared to what industry standard is. Mm -hmm. So, um, so those in, in in the context of the budget, those were the two things that came out of the department head meeting. Um, because there is some indirect financial impact to the vacation request as well, but it's indirect, not direct. So, are there any other portions of the budget that you think we need to have any type of significant discussion on until we start to, to get the numbers more finalized? No, not really. Um, is there we had, we had um, Brad was going to go speak to the library and the elementary school. The elementary school, and then Tom was going to talk to Board of Health. Do I need to talk to Highway? No, I thought you were doing Highway. Who else was doing, who was doing Highway? Did we have anybody talk to Highway? Highway's oh. budget isn't like crazy. No, I, I'd like to. The, uh, I was going to talk to the Highway, but it was more about the note I have is about the uh, pavement plan. The pavement, no, pavement, plan. pavement, 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 plan. Management, plan. pavement plan. management plan. Yeah, I'd, I'd also like to find out how he plans to support the new tree warden's tree plan as well. Because I think we need to. So the tree warden is planning on going out to bid and hiring okay. with that money oh, and doing and implementing his plan. You haven't had any response from the email the other day from the tree warden in regards to Allen Road? No, not yet, no. Um, one of the things that I would like to see is, not for this year, of course, because it would be kind of like, you know, putting the, it's a little after the fact, but I think going forward, the departments that have large budgets, not give us a lump sum for their salary. I want a breakdown of each officer, each department worker, what their hourly rate is, what their differential is, what their step is, and, and how they came up with this giant so number. Ask them. Send, send out the request. I would prefer to see your bottoms up on the salaries too. So ask them for it, even though they already submitted their budget. Oh, okay. Yeah. yeah? I, yeah. Okay. Mm -hmm. Or do you need a vote for that? I want to see it. <laughs> I, I miss what you said. No, I'm, can, can I get a Can I get a motion to have the department yeah. heads? Uh, re I, so I'd, I'd like a breakdown of all the salaries. I move that we uh, ask uh, Kelly to uh, request the department heads to provide a bottoms up summary of the uh, of the wages requests in their fiscal year 24 budget. Is that what you wanted? Yeah. Sorry. All in favor? Aye. All right. Aye. Yeah. No, I would like to see that because. Um, does an advisory already get that? No, no they don't. No. We get this, they get exactly what I've given you guys. Yeah. They get a lump sum. Yeah. And, and it really and, should be And it's hard to account. figure advisory out. Advisory gets it by account number also. Yeah. I remember when I was on the advisory, like we literally were counting pencils, I felt like. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, you. If, I mean, I know last year when I they were asking for five increases to the chief's wages, we asked Chief Martell and he explained uh, like the firefighter's wages went up and a chunk of that was the assistant chief's wages, which is in the firefighter wages. There's no, it's not broken up. He's yeah. chief, assistant chief Chafee's, his, his pay is buried in with all the worker bees. Yeah, right. So I want to know what everybody, because everybody's got different hourly rate. Nobody works for the same pay. And I'm not talking about the fire department in particular, but there's no officers that share the same pay. There's no highway workers that share the same pay. Yeah. And so how do, how do we calculate this? How do we know if what, if I'm not going to check their math because, right. you know, we need... That's why you went to law school. Right, mm -hmm. exactly. Okay. <laughs> um, but it would be good to have those numbers to have the raw data so that we can just make sure that when they're calculating their percent they're not just doing a lump percent yeah. and and somebody's at the top of where they're supposed to be in their in their area and and we need to maybe bump somebody up more than somebody else because they're they should have started higher and they didn't or you know we don't know what anybody's it, like in are. personal bylaws is there like the bylaws don't address anything other than this, the grade. 
of the, it doesn't have pay and it scales. says laborer. It doesn't have pay scales. It does not, because so we didn't ab do adopt. We didn't adopt the steps from the um, or the, yeah, the step and grade. Right. Yeah, I don't know the only thing adopted at the town that. meeting was was the people, the mm -hmm. positions, laborers. Yeah for highway, and, and and they were in groups. So administrative assistants, laborers, and the Collins Center had a range that was valid using old data for 2021. It's now 2020. Yeah, and we, adjusted, and we adjusted it at the time for COLA yeah. since 2021, but we didn't adopt the steps necessarily. No, not at all. We did not adopt a step system. Yeah. Right. So, all right, it, it's better to say we did not retain the step system because there was a step system oh. that wasn't actually used that was in this town for years prior to the Collins Center piece. But mm -hmm. people weren't using the steps, and that's one of the reasons why our salaries started to lag so much is that because they weren't doing that granular mm -hmm. definition and taking into account how many years people had and the, and the, the like. They, people were only getting the COLA raise and they weren't getting steps while they were in neighboring communities. Mm -hmm. so. um, but uh, anywho, yeah, so let's go ahead and just ask them to do okay. the math. Doesn't hurt them to do a little math. All right. Um, did you do a finish, did you finish the vote on that? We did. They did, yeah. Okay. The, Another thing to consider in the budget is the warrant, right? So traditionally, what I've seen in past warrants, so I'm talking behind my hand here, is that you raise an appropriated money for things that should be in a budget, like line painting, line painting. buy a car every year for a department. Um, that should, that's a budget thing. So, that's fine if you want to continue to do that. And I understand why you do the line painting, and I, I remember that one because there was still money in the budget and that wasn't on the warrant last year, so it sticks in my head that it needs to be there this year. It's because it rolls over, and line painting can't be done in March when it's snowing and raining. <laughs> it has to be done when it's warmer, and it may not get done due to timing until after the fiscal year. So that's important that that roll over. Yeah. However, you need to keep those things in mind when looking at your overall budget yep. because that is going to impact how much we're actually raising appropriate. Absolutely. Because so. I always thought we paid for a line painting out of uh, free cash, which meant it wouldn't affect raising appropriate. Not the warrant articles that I saw. Okay. I mean, it's one of those things you, you so yeah. good practice is it should be from raise and appropriate because it is a recurring expense and it should be on the operational mm -hmm. budget. However, in a really lean year, if we did it as an exception and, and, and did it from there, I don't think anybody would lose any sleep over it for the amount of money that it is. Um, but that's, a, that's more of a judgment call than it is necessarily a, a policy mm -hmm. or a best yeah. practice. You know, it's kind of like the fire equipment one that tends to wind up landing as an article for the same reason as he doesn't want to spend it until he has to, and sometimes you can't get it in depending on stocks and mm. timing of when you're due. Yeah, so those things need to be kept in mind, that they're yeah. going to also impact the bottom line. Yeah. So, all right, any other budget discussion? before we move into executive session right. or do the correspondence and move into in the, in the next version of the budget, one thing that would really help me is if next to each requested amount, we had a percentage and it gave us the percentage change from fiscal year 23. That allows me to sort of scan down and look for the numbers that are, <laughs> yeah, the, the ones that are having a big impact. Send me the spreadsheet. Okay, so you got the spreadsheet. Can't you add the column? Okay. I don't know. Can I, can I edit the spreadsheet that you sent me? Oh, maybe not. Maybe I locked everything, but the one that you can play. Oh, <laughs> well, you give me a playground. I can, or I, I might can, have. I can might. I, have. Can I copy so it off? So, do you want the percentage it? of what's recommended or what's requested? I want a percentage of what the, I want to know the percentage that the of what the department requested, the percentage variance from fiscal year 23, the percentage variance of what we're recommending, and the percentage variance of what advisories recommend. I'll unlock the spreadsheet. There and you go. I can I can do it real quick. I I love spreadsheets. Okay. 
Yeah. There's something wrong. I cut and pasted. No, that's it okay. Cause you, I, I can do the percentages of each, but I can't do the percentage variance. So we don't duplicate so. work. Can you just send it mm -hmm. your pattern? Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, and it's just, yeah. just that's just that's just what I'm used to seeing. And so when I look, I, I see numbers and I see big numbers. I'm going, but how much are they changing? Because so actually, on my spreadsheet, I have that column, but it just shows me what they asked for and what they had the prior year to see mm -hmm. what the difference was and okay. what the change was. All right. Um, I don't have the one what you're recommending and what the mm -hmm. to right. the twenty. Send it unlock copy. All right. so that we Thank can you. Lock it up. Yeah. I'll send you an unlocked copy, but I'm not going to be held responsible for any other data changing it. <laughs> <laughs> well, if necessary, so I can just make my own. So do you guys get errors when you open that up? I get an error when I open it up, which is why I ended up having to do something with it, and then I just cut and paste it and created my own Excel with it. That's odd, because I've had no problem opening it from any computer. Yeah, I'll show you what it does on mine. It's weird. I've never seen it before. Hmm. So, barring any additional conversation, can I get a motion to move into executive session under Exemption 3, not to return to open meeting? We'll, we'll uh, adjourn from executive session. Yeah. Um, I move that we uh, convene an executive session to discuss strategy with respect to collective bargaining or litigation if an open meeting may have a detrimental effort on the bargaining or litigating position of the public body and the chair so declares. I so declare. Uh, see, I also, uh, and as part of that motion, I move that we adjourn direct, that we do not adjourn to open session, but we adjourn directly. You do not reconvene an open session. I move that we do not reconvene an open session after executive session. Second. All in favor, Coughlin, aye. Kudos, aye. Regan, aye. All right, thank you all.